you, John. Thank you very much. Thanks, John. All right, can you guys hear me okay? Okay, so for today's agenda, we're gonna cover customer engagement through the digital strategies, um, recent changes in the search landscape and how that affects you, and then also best practices for optimizing your channel and media mix. So to get right in with customer engagement through the digital strategy, so when we think about the customer journey, we think about it in three main sections. The first being awareness and consideration. So in this phase, hotels don't yet know about you. They're um, not yet aware, of, I'm sorry, customers don't, not, don't yet know about you. They're not yet aware about your hotel and what your hotel has to offer. There are many different services that sort of fit within this um, particular engagement. The next is research and familiarity. So in this particular situation, people know about you, but they're seeking additional information to find out whether or not you're a fit for their needs. And again, these cover some main um, sort of strategies as well. And lastly, decision and book. So in this particular situation, a customer knows about your hotel. Um, they're familiar with you. They know that you meet their needs. And they're ready to ultimately book. And so you can kind of see that there are a lot of different uh, tactics that fall within all of these strategies. And we're going to cover a lot of those in the rest of the presentation. So to begin with, recent changes in search. So the whole concept of micro moments. A micro moment is that sudden realization someone has when they're on the go. Um, you know, they want to go somewhere, they want to do something, they want to purchase something. They're usually inspired by, you know, maybe a video that they've watched on YouTube or inspired by a, com a commercial they might have seen on TV. And they're on the go, so they're typically checking their mobile device and looking to see what is out there, what's available. So it's really important that you have that brand presence, not just on desktops, but also on mobile devices. Um, you know, oftentimes visitors are initially doing that initial search on their mobile device and then ultimately converting on a desktop. So it's really important as you think through your digital strategies that you think about making sure that you're available across all these devices. Um, the next is Google's removal of the right-hand rail ad. So we saw this happen a few months ago and the overall impact we've seen. So we've seen cost per clicks increase, I would say a minimum of 5%. Um, we've seen upwards of 25 to 30% in terms of the overall cost. We've also seen an increase in overall cost per click. So what does this ultimately mean for you? Um, it's really important that you're actively monitoring where your ad is showing up. So if you were previously in positions one through four, as an example, does it make sense now to increase your budget to make sure you're maintaining that ad position and bringing in, bringing in that conversion and that profit? If you were previously in positions five to nine, does it make sense now to increase your budget to ensure that you're showing up in higher positions? Or does it make more sense to potentially switch your keyword strategy around, focus on more relevant things specific to your property, um, or potentially even looking at other channels um, beyond just paid search? Location extensions. So location extensions are, if you've ever seen a paid search ad and you see a, um, an address show up underneath the ad, we enable those as a default for all of our customers. But nowadays, if you do have those location extensions enabled, you actually have a presence above the organic listings within Google Maps. So it makes it all that more important um, to have that prime real estate. And um, you know, now Google is promoting all of this real estate above all of the organic search results. Um, price extensions. So these are brand new extensions that recently launched um, probably a couple days ago. And it's only available on mobile devices, but essentially what it does is it allows businesses to showcase multiple um, you know, functions of their business within a paid search ad. So specific to hotels, it's a great way to be able to promote different room types and different rates associated with those room types. Um, if you've got, you know, consumers that are shopping for the best available rate, they'd be able to see it here and you're kind of pre-qualifying that visitor before they even get to your website. Um, another great thing too is you're also, you know, showing the consumer in advance the types of rooms that you have, whether that's ocean view rooms, whether that's um, your standard room, it, it provides a lot of additional information and takes up a lot of additional real estate before someone even gets to your website. Um, expa expanded text ads. So Google's been talking about this for some time now. And uh, it's still in beta, but it should be rolling out over the next couple months. And this basically just gives um, advertisers more real estate to promote different ad copies. So for hotels specifically, I think it gives a lot of um, ability to really promote what your hotel has to offer, kind of the look and feel of your hotel. And again, all of this is something a visitor can see before they even have to click through and get to your website and cost you that dollar. So you're kind of, again, pre-qualifying that visitor. 
Um, we do expect to see an increase in click-through rate as a result of this because it's a lot more content. And um, you can kind of tell from the screenshot, it takes up a lot more real estate. So again, pushing those additional competitors further down the list. Um, and the last big change that we've seen, so about a year ago, Yahoo and Bing um, sort of changed their partnership. So they had a partnership where a lot of the ads were served through your standard Bing ads network. And about a year ago, Yahoo kind of adjusted the partnership and broke away into their own search network. So what this means is that their own search network shows roughly 50% of the desktop inventory and 100% of the mobile in inventory specific to um, searches. So we have noticed that overall, this particular search network doesn't have as much search volume yet because it's still kind of growing. Um, but for the, for the search volume that it does have, it's a much lower cost than we've actually seen a much higher conversion. And the reason why is if you've ever been to yahoo.com and you're looking at search results, you'll see that everything above the fold um, is an ad. Everything on the right-hand side, everything on the left-hand side. So it really does, um, all of the real estate above the fold because it's an ad, it's driving those visitors to your site. So um, you know, it's a great um, sort of network to showcase to the higher audience working professional. And so again, we've seen a lot of kind of um, increase in return through this channel and it is one that we're starting to implement for most of our clients. And now Eileen is gonna touch on some of the um, optimizing your channel and media mix. Yeah, I get the fun stuff, right? Optimizing your channel, media mix. So I'm not gonna scare you. There's not gonna be a lot of detail. There's not gonna be a lot of data in front of you. I'm just gonna talk very high level and some key performance metrics that can help you judge whether or not you're spending the money in the right place. Okay, so I'm, I'm technically challenged. I'm gonna hit this. <laughs> so this is where you were expecting you, everybody to be able to participate to be successful and being able to pull, pull your ROI up or ROAS. So maximize your brand terms within search. Obviously there's a lot we can talk about with search and optimizing campaigns, but we're gonna stick to brand for today. Um, leverage your data-driven travel intent display network. So what is that? We'll talk through that. That's a way to be able to participate in display remarketing and taking some of the risk out in terms of cost, which we'll go through that. Um, remarket your website and your Facebook traffic. You've already spent the money and the effort to get them to your site. They know who you are. Make sure they come back. Re-engage them throughout the internet. <coughs> and participate in meta search. And we talked a little bit about that throughout today, and we'll go again talking through that. And then the, I call it the redhead stepchild, the OTA. It is there is some need in some cases to advertise with the OTA. If it was a four-letter word, that'd probably be better. But it's only three. <laughs> so talking through brand terms. We're going to talk a little bit about search. And so what we're recommending is that everybody with their brand terms specifically make sure they get 80% share of impressions or impression share. So is that a new term? How many people know what impression share is? Yeah, there's not very many. So <laughs> impression share is a really good way to be able to determine whether or not you're getting your share of your brand impressions. So what that totally means is, it's really simple math, Total number of impressions that you're ad is seeing for your brand term, divided by the total number of impressions that are available. Did I do it the wrong way? No, I did it the right way. So we're expecting eight out of 10 times your brand should come up when somebody's searching for your hotel. If it's less than that, you need to invest more. If it's more than that, you could probably invest a little bit less. But we're, we're looking at 80%. <clears throat> so why is that important? Well, I think we all know that's where most people when they're searching, that's where, they're, that's where they're finding your brand and that's where they're most likely gonna end up booking. <clears throat> and the biggest takeaway from this, so this is our Intellistar product, I'm gonna plug it for Neil. This is a great way to be able to see who is searching for your keywords and who's purchasing it. And if you don't own it, somebody else will. I guarantee you, if you're not owning that eight to 10, 80% of that space, somebody else, like booking.com, is going after your share. Are there any questions on that before I keep going? We're good? Okay, so I'm going to put the 80%, these are basically what we're expecting, we're recommending that we do. So 80% brand term again. <coughs> Optimize your brand and ranking and ad ranking between positions one and two. I'm going to put a, a row as up there, return on investment. You should be at least getting a six to one ROI or higher on your ad investment. So does that mean if you're getting a two to one, you should fire your firm? 
No, that means there should be a discussion as to why it's not higher than two to one. Right, there's a lot of things that go into an ad that make it successful. It's not just somebody creating the media in front of it. So we can talk about that a little bit later if we need to. Display and re so display and remarketing. This is again an important, uh, good, it's a really great tool to be able to use. This is a great, um, what am I thinking, graphic that has a lot of detail in it. So what we're recommending is travel, intent, or behavioral display. So what that basically is is data-driven media purchases. <coughs> so it's a behavioral network. So you're reaching people who are in market to travel, frequent travelers with a high propensity to book your hotel. So you're kind of taking the risk out, right? These people have already gone through, created the database. They're pulling the data from directly from first party um, data sources like United, Delta, American, a bunch of different places. And so you're able to actually create media and get your message in front of them as they're traveling. So why would you do this? Obviously it's to fill rooms, prospect for new customers, and drive customers back to your website to convert. This is a really good way to get brand awareness. I think some people are afraid of brand awareness because of the cost and the low return. This is the way to get your message in front of, excuse me, I'm getting nervous. <laughs> this is the way to get your message in front of people that are, that are in market to travel. They've already made a decision to go somewhere, and so it's taking away that risk of you not getting in front of them. <coughs> excuse me. So, the R, so uh, Facebook and display remarketing as well. Same thing. I know um, Nisha was talking a little bit about display and remarketing within, <laughs> within Facebook. Um, it's a great way to be able to get in front of that tool as well. So you can actually profile and do some brand and, and research. What am I thinking of? Brand awareness. So increase your reach, be able to mimic your profile customers, and be able to do remarketing through them as well. OK, so I'm going to put the ROAS up again. So you're basically, <laughs> for display remar intent remarketing, you want to be able to maximize your reach, increase your customer base and fill rooms, and the ROI, we're looking at six to one or higher. Same thing. It doesn't mean if it's two to one, you fire your firm. It means you have a conversation, because there's usually something more involved with it than just the advertising. Um, for Facebook and remarketing, it's a little bit lower return. We're looking at a two to one ROI. Any questions so far? No? Meta search, we talked about this as well. So meta search, again, is an another great way to be able to get in front of people that are in market to travel. So they've already made a decision, they're shopping. It's a way to get your property in front of them. Why? To fill rooms, prospect for new customers, and drive them to your website to convert. Made it very basic. OK, so again, this is a, the ROI for this. So OK, so from out of search, I know we've seen low, some low art returns on investment. And it's usually because we don't have rate parity or your inventory is not available. There's a lot of issues with this that we can fix. But again, it's a conversation. So we are expecting a five to one or ROI or higher. And again, if it's not that, it's the conversation starter. So you really need to be able to be open to have that conversation with your provider. OK, so our key takeaways. So again, I want to make sure that we are clear on the brand term impression share. You need to be 80%. So eight out of 10 times, let's make sure that you're property owns that space or again somebody else will buy it from you which is not what you want recapture your website and Facebook traffic through remarketing again you guys went through the work of creating the great website got the qualified traffic there bring it back and convert them on your own <clears throat> and then maximize your presence in front of the people that are in market so that you can do that through behavioral display the travel intent networks or meta search and again, if necessary, we can always help you, <laughs> or anybody can help you with that, with uh, advertising and OTAs for date-specific occupancy needs. That's if you're really in a bind and maybe a big group quit on you or something. Last second, there is an opportunity to try and be able to pull this business back. Don't be so quiet. So that's what we have. <laughs> that was really quick. Does yeah. anyone? So I think we do have time for questions. Yes, which would be good. And I hope you guys have some questions. Are there any questions? Yes. What percentage would you say uh, for an independent hotel of your PDP campaign that you could be 
That's a great question. I think it's 100% determined on um, how well known your brand is today. So as an example, we base it off of search volume for your brand, meaning how many people are searching for your brand to begin with. So if you are already an established, well-known brand, then you're going to have a lot more search volume, meaning that it's going to cost a lot more, meaning that the budget has to be a lot higher. If you're just starting out and no one knows about you yet, you're probably going to invest more in those non-brand terms to make people aware of your property and sort of build that brand funnel. So I'd say we'd seen anywhere from a 20% of the budget upwards of 90% of the budget, depending on that particular situation. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? And so I think, I'm sorry, so I'm going to expand on that. So I mean, I think, I know we all think search immediately right away. And I think, I think a really good opportunity is the travel and tent network stuff that we have up here, only because it's about getting your hotel in front of somebody while they're searching. So that's a really good way for them to see who you are and then do a search. These are my friends. Any other questions? <laughs> Any other questions? Sure, sure. So we work with two, ma two main partners that we work with for programmatic, um, Sojourn and Adara. So these are the ones, when, when Eileen was referring to travel intent uh, display, that's what we're referring to. We're essentially referring to um, a display network where these two display partners have a lot of very specific partnerships that they work with that are travel specific. So they partner with all airlines, they partner with major brands, they partner with OTAs, and as a result of those partnerships, they have a lot of data. So all of that data that they're gathering and all those um, profiles of visitors that they're um, sort of building up, those are the ones that are being served our ads. So the way that it works is that if you are a hotel in Chicago, as an example, and I as a consumer have booked an airline uh, ticket to Chicago, uh, maybe I'm searching on some of the major hotel brands for my stays during different days, Sojourn and Adara will qualify us as a visitor or qualify me as a visitor that is likely to book at a hotel like the hotel that Sojourner Adar might be promoting. And as a result of that, I will be the one to see the banner and I'll likely convert as a result of that. So um, yeah, so when Eileen was saying travel intent right. display, that's essentially what we're referring to is these visitors are already pre-qualified as looking to travel to a specific area. Um, and then Sojourner and Adar are auto-optimizing to ensure that as engagement with those ads occurs, they're adjusting their strategy to see which um, consumers are seeing those banners and which aren't. And it's also not limited to in-market. So I mean, I think we like the in-market because it takes away some of the risk. Like we know they bought a ticket. We know they're going to travel somewhere, so let's put your ad in front of them. But there's a really good way to be able to do it if you have a unique property, and let's say you have a really high ADR, and you're an all-inclusive, for example. They would be able to go through and take a look at the traveler's propensity to purchase that type of travel, and we can customize campaigns that just go after that audience. And I think we're going to leave the Q&A there. Thanks very much, Eileen and Megan.